At what point does it become an obsession? So we're in sort of a weird, a holding sort of situation when it comes to the whole moving thing. At this point that I am filming right now, we still haven't actually closed on the house that we bought. We've been reassured that there's like no way we could lose it. Okay. We're just, you know, not actually the owners of it yet. So we can't start on any of the renovations that need to happen before we can move in and we can't start moving out. So Matt had to go to New York for work. So he went ahead and packed up his studio just in case, you know, he doesn't have time later. And I was about to start packing up my studio and then I was like, oh wait, between the closing and the renovations, I've got weeks, at least like a couple weeks. I'm not gonna sit around for weeks. I'm gonna do projects. Who are we kidding? I'm gonna try to do some small projects over the next couple weeks. Small-ish projects. Simple projects, things that don't involve, you know, three weeks of patchworking fabric or trying to block out an entirely new pattern. And I have been really wanting more of this dress. I know, I already have so many, but this dress specifically out of all the ones I've made from my magic pattern, the only pattern I consistently use, this has definitely been my favorite. It has been the most worn. This is like every time I do laundry, it's in there because I have always worn it. So why not just make some more? But I was also like, that's not worth making a video about. You've already made so many of these dresses in a video. Why would you do it again? But then y'all saved me, you. Because I was going through comments the other day and there were a few comments about this pattern, this dress. Someone said, what about a v-neck? Someone said, what about a scoop neck? And someone said, what about a cowl neck? So we're gonna do all three of those today. Probably gonna start easy with the V-neck, then do the scoop neck, because I think the cowl neck will kind of need to have a scoop neck. I am making all of them out of delightfully soft, pleasurable knits. So first up, I have this piece of gray fabric that I just got in my last Remainders Remnant haul. I actually realized when I got home that this is the exact same fabric that I made one of my dolman sleeve shirts out of that I also wear all the time because it's very enjoyable. I think this will be the scoop neck one. Then I have this massive chunk of fabric. I've already used it one time to do a mock-up and I still have so much left. I got this at Joanne before I discovered remainders, but it was like 80% off. So I just bought everything that was left on, I always wanna say the spool, but it's the board. Oh my God, I've lost words. The bolt, whoo. All right, let me drink some more coffee because it's apparently way too early in the morning. Good grief, the bolt. So I'm gonna try to do the cowl neck one, cowl neck one out of this. And then finally, I wanted to do a little bit of color blocking and like as much as I've been making bright colored clothes lately and loving it, I do love a black dress. So on my last remainders haul, I also got a bunch of solid colored knits, including this black one. And then this piece, my sister gave to me a while back when she went through her stash and de-stashed it. It's a pretty small piece of fabric, but it's enough to do either the sleeves or maybe just the front panel. I don't know, I'll have to decide where I want to color block this in. And I think that's gonna be the V-neck one because I think it'll look best with that, which means that's the one we're starting with. Ready? Y'all, the house right next to us has a metal gate across their like side yard driveway thing that like actually connects to the side of our house. And they constantly go in and out of this gate and just like let it slam shut behind them. And it is so loud, particularly from my green chair in the corner where I embroider, it's right next to it. Like that chair is like one foot and a very thin wall away from this gate. And I'll be sitting there just embroidering, not paying attention. And then all of a sudden there's like clang, freaks me out every time. All right, let's get started. Is it trash day? Yes, it is. One thing I do want to make sure to do is raise 
the side pockets a little. I'm really bad with putting my pockets too low because I always measure by being like, here's where my hand sits. And then I'm like, cool, so start the pocket there. But that's not actually where you wanna start the pocket. You wanna slide your hands in up here and let them rest in the pocket down there. So even on this one where I got it better, they're still, I would say, two inches lower than I want them. I don't need these instructions anymore. Actually, it has been a hot second since I've made this dress, so. Yeah, no, I'm fine. This dress is so easy to make, y'all. I cannot emphasize enough how easy this dress is, which is why I never just make it exactly like the pattern has it, because too easy. What if I did the sleeves and then I put like a panel around the bottom of the dress? That could be fun. Y'all, actually my obsession with Raglan's shirts started when I was a kid. I remember for some reason, just like desperately wanting your average Raglan sleeve, like baseball tee. I don't think I ever had one and I just wanted one so much and I have no idea why. Anyway, yeah, that's hilarious. I just remembered that. So here we are. This is what you do when you're an adult. You make your childhood dreams come true but you update them. So now it's not raglan sleeve t-shirts, it's raglan sleeve dresses. Okay, I got distracted, but I'm back. And I'm thinking, what if I do the pockets in this material? Because the way this dress kind of stretches open, you typically can see a little bit of that inner pocket. And I actually really like how I did it on this one where you can see the purple. So I think that would be fun if you had this on the sleeves and then a little peek in the pockets. We're gonna go for it. Well, that was crooked. Oh, I don't think I cut that out right. Ooh, that was bad. <laughs> I'm getting sloppy. All right, we have survived the sleeves. Which edges are your edges? No. Mm. I specifically said no. Salvage to salvage. Oh God, we're really struggling with folding. No! This is your second morning. Don't forget to make it v-neck, cause I kind of already forgot I was gonna do that. In all fairness, for the v-neck one, I think I am gonna just cut it out normally and sew it together, and then before adding, uh, words are hard today. The binding, the fa- <laughs> Binding. I'll probably just cut it into a v-neck. I think I'll just need a slightly longer binding. You say to shorten here, but I am not petite. Not at all. All right, I'm gonna stop filming right now because it's really making this take longer. <laughs> Let's jump to everything being cut out. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Uh, so <laughs> things went off the rails a little bit. Whoops. Uh, it, it's entirely my own fault. I was not paying attention. And I was cutting out the last panel and I just started cutting it off at the short level instead of the long level where it was supposed to be. Yeah. Luckily, I can roll with the punches even when I have accidentally punched myself. So here's what I did to fix that. I cut the whole thing off, of course, saving the panel from the bottom. Then I took the other side piece, cause that was the side back, I think. So I took the side front and cut it off at the same place. And then I made some little strips of the red fabric that are gonna go in between. Is it gonna look good? I don't know. I never know. That worked. Ish. Wee! Do I have black thread? I could do red thread as like a contrast on the whole thing. Do I have red thread? It is less likely that I have red thread than black thread, so <clears throat> probably not. Okay, let's go sew stuff. Shows how well I know my thread stash. Turns out I have tons of red thread and black thread. I decided to stick with black though. No getting contrasty this time. Then someone nearby decided it's construction time, hence the switch to voiceover. No one wants to listen to that. Task number one is getting those contrast panels onto the side pieces of the dress, which I accomplished on the first one with a medium level of precision. Like I measured a few times, there I am measuring, but um, I also just chopped off anything that wasn't exactly what I wanted. There I am chopping. I think it looks good, but replicating it on the next three panels so they all line up on the sides. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. 
Alrighty, that pretty much worked, kinda. It's not the neatest, but then when is anything that I sew the neatest? It's not, and that's fine. Works for me. And now I'm actually gonna iron stuff. What? Y'all, I just finished watching Smigadoon. Schmigadoon? Cute, fun, good stuff. But apparently Apple TV, if you don't touch it, it'll just start playing a bunch of trailers. So I just left it alone and it probably played through all of its recent content. It was so many trailers. And out of all of those, three comedies, three, that's it. It was just death and darkness and destruction and doom and more death and darkness and destruction and doom and death and darkness and destruction and doom. And then, oh look, Ted Lasso. What has TV become? I mean, I assume there's an audience for it. I assume someone is watching and enjoying these shows, but I, <sighs> I am not good at watching dramas, by which I mean, I don't like watching dramas. I find them over dramatic with such high stakes because oh my God, they all have such high stakes nowadays that they're just completely unrelatable. I've also stopped watching all the uh, superhero stuff and I'm not a big fan of disaster movies either because it's always like, here's the characters, here's the characters you should care about because they're our main characters. And uh, that group of people in the background who just got taken out by an alien spaceship or a giant wave, don't worry about them. We don't care about them. I'm sure none of them had families or hopes and aspirations of their own. And like when I watch these things, I cannot help but see everyone random who dies and be like, eh, why don't we care about them? Also just like the practical cost of the destruction. These superhero fights always end up taking place in some city and they'll just come through and like smash through a bunch of cars and you're not supposed to care about that. But in my head, I'm going, oh my God, all of those people have to buy a new car now. Their insurance is probably gonna go through the roof. Look at that building you just smashed. Like how much is this going to cost the taxpayers to rebuild their city after you guys finish battling it out? I don't think I'm the target audience for these kind of movies, sports movies also bad for me. And not just because I don't care about sports, but because you're told like, here's the team that this movie is about. Here's the team that we're rooting for. So they must win. We want them to win. That's the whole point is that they should win. But I'm always like, what about the other team? We don't know what's going on with them. What if they've been working really hard this year? What if the quarterback on that team will only receive love from his father if he wins a football game. Like, we don't know their stories. Why are we against them? Anyway, thanks for coming to my TED chat. They're like TED Talks, but with no real point. I'm bored of ironing now, so I'm gonna move on. I got the back panel sewed on while testing how many pins I could fit in my mouth at once. The record is currently 15, and then debated on whether I should add top stitching. Should I top stitch? I decided yes, and did a bit of that. Then jumped ahead to the hem, cause why not? After about 10 seconds of sewing, I could no longer handle how bad it was looking. So it was off to do a better job. How bad is it? It's pretty bad. I decided to try fusible hem tape. Is that what this is? I threw away the package before ever using it apparently to try to make the hem less stretchy and therefore get a nice clean seam around it. Twas more time consuming, but I think I'm reaching the stage in my sewing journey where I can start playing around with cleaner finishes. Bit of a faff. Then it was on to adding the sleeves, simple as always, before finally, it's v-neck time. I tried the dress on and kind of marked with pins whereabouts the v-neck could theoretically go. Now I am folding it in half so that it will be symmetrical when I do the choppy choppy. <gasps> I know why it was like that. See, I haven't made this dress in a while. And I was like, I don't need to look at the instructions. I remember everything. And then I was wondering why the sleeves were so like gapy on top when I put it on. Because there's darts in the top of the sleeves and I completely forgot about them. I can still add them. It's just gonna be a bit of a pain in the butt. 12 seconds later. Sorted. Back to what we were doing before I was derailed. So I think I'm gonna start my V ever so slightly on the actual sleeve portion on the red part and then angle down like so. Am I gonna completely wing it? Yeah, we're just gonna go for it. 
Looks like a v-neck to me. So I watched a small amount of a couple videos on how to do v-neck binding on knit and it seems that there are a couple different ways. You're just supposed to put the connection in the front at the V and there's a seam there and that's okay. Anything is okay really. So I did cut this longer than the normal pattern. That being said, I may have cut it too long. We get to do a little guessing on that front. I feel like this might be okay. Look, we're uh, we're plowing towards dinner time rather quickly at this point, which means that my level of caring is going down by the every like three minutes. I don't know what I am doing or if I even care. Yeah, okay. Okay, and at that point, Matt FaceTimed me and I kept working while we talked, but basically here's what you do. You cut like this shape in the ends of your bias according to the diagonal of the, your actual v-neck and then you match those together right side to right side and you stitch around them in the little v you clip right into that v as close as possible match the seams together fold the whole thing in half and then you basically sew it on like a normal bias thing around the neck which i have just finished doing. Let's see if it succeeded. I have medium high hopes. Feels about right because I gave medium high effort. Oh, it looks medium high decent. Yeah. Oh, it's black. You can't see that. Yeah. It's ever so slightly off, but you know what? It's not bad. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try it on, make sure that it's okay. Iron it, top stitch around the whole outside, and then dress number one is done. Just in time for dinner. Let's move on to day two and dress two and I will try to go on slightly fewer tangents. I won't try very hard, but I'll try a little. Alrighty, day two, dress two, let's go. That was officially all of my energy for today. Like all of it, it's gone. Possibly because I keep getting woken up at 5.30 in the morning by spam calls. Why? It is an ungodly hour. I have massively overfilled my coffee cup. So today is gray dress and oh look, I wore my matching shirt. Now that I finished the last one though, I'm kind of questioning whether I want a plain gray dress. Oh, hello. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I should color block. That was a big yawn. Okay, actually, I don't have a ton of this. I do like to pull pieces of fabric to make these dresses and completely ignore how much fabric it takes to make these dresses. Hmm. But okay, besides the scoop neck on this one, I'd like to do like bell or trumpet sleeves, whichever one are that shape. And then I might make the whole thing a little bit shorter, especially since I have less fabric. Yeah, y'all, I have like one and a half yards of this. To the fabric stash. Okay, I love me some purple and I have these three purple fabrics that I got at Remainders. Ooh, this one even has the gray dot in it. That looks great. That would do amazingly. Why? Come back. Y'all, color blocking, fabric piecing, whatever it's called, it'll save your butt and leave you with like more interesting clothing in the end. I should probably note that I widen the hem on these dresses pretty much every single time I make them now. Like I just added a full on two and a half inches on each side of this panel. I'm just doing it by eye now. I used to mark it out all nice and neat and now I'm just like, bup, 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 bup. it'll be fine. But yeah, so if you're making this yourself and like you follow the actual shape of the pattern and it doesn't seem as swooshy as mine, that's why I add a lot of width. Because I live for the swoosh. I am once again asking that we skip ahead to everything being cut out. Do I have gray thread? I have purple thread. I do not have gray thread. I think the sewing of this is gonna be pretty average. Nothing all that interesting. Yeah, I'll get back to you when we get to the interesting part or the different part, which will be the scoop neck, which will be the very end. So skip ahead. All right, that went, um, not terribly. I decided to play around with the uh, fusible heat tape. Him tape. Wow. While doing the pockets and it didn't go super well. So in typical me fashion, I gave that up and just didn't do it on the second pocket. So I have one pocket that's pretty janky and the other pocket looks a lot nicer. 
we don't fix our mistakes here, we just make sure to not make them again. I also completely forgot once again, to put a dart in the sleeves. Ugh. I at least remembered before sewing them on this time. And I did the whole hemming method of pre-ironing your hem with all the proper folds before you sew over it. What? Where has my slapdashery method gone? All right, so the last thing is the scoop neck. Once again, like before, I tried it on and just kind of marked out with some pens how low I want it to go and everything, what the general curve should be. I'm gonna fold it in half and chop off some fabric. The binding this time should be nice and easy. It's pretty much normal. I'm just guessing at the length once again. Let me leave myself some seam allowance. Scoop neck. That's not what I wanted. Wow, you have brains. What is happening here? Did I just sew it twisted? Damn it! <laughs> Why do I do these things? I feel like the number one lesson you can learn from me is, hey, if you just pay attention while you're doing things, you probably won't make as many mistakes. Okay, well, let's try this again. To baste or not to baste? What a question. I'm gonna baste, because I really don't know if this is the right length. Okay, I think it's okay, because when I hold it up from the shoulders, well, I think it's mostly okay. <laughs> I think it could be a little tighter. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little tighter, but basically that's it. The scoop neck. Easy. We're gonna call that a success and move on to dress number three. I'm invisible. I thought I'd stick with the whole themed clothing thing I've been doing in this video and wear the thing I already made out of this fabric. I don't know how long it's gonna last though. I've been waddling around the house like a penguin. This was like the, the sort of a mock-up for my Halloween bat wing dress. So it's very tiny around the hem. It's a full on like wiggle dress. I think I'm gonna change soon. Anyway though, cowl neck. So here's what you'll find if you look up cowl neck dresses, which I did yesterday. They're pretty much all sleeveless, like all of them. I found very few exceptions. One of the exceptions was um, Closet Historian has a great video on how to make a cowl neck top and it has like dolman sleeves. Wasn't super helpful for me for this project because her front piece was all one piece. I have raglan sleeves and a three piece front bodice, so I've made a cowl neck one time before, sort of. It was sort of a cowl neck, I guess, on um, the bridesmaid's dress I made back in the day. That was one of my like first sewing projects. It had sort of this cowl-y style neck on it. And the way on that pattern that that neck got added on was as a completely separate piece. Basically like sewing the binding onto something, but your binding is this big. And so it goes blunk and it drapes forward. So I'm going with that. I think that's the most logical way to add a cowl neck to a dress that is already in three pieces on the front. So again, I think I'm gonna cut it all out the normal way and then I'm probably going to widen the neckline and kind of scoop it out similar to the last dress because you kind of need a wider neckline for a cowl to sit nicely otherwise it's just kind of bunched up around your neck. Do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I am going to do the like sleeveless, sleeveless, wow, talking is hard. The sleeveless version of this dress. And then I have so much fabric here. Might as well use it. I think I'm gonna make it like floor length just for the funsies of it. So let me get it all cut out and I will come back to you with that cowl neck and, um how I'm going to do that. Okay, so the cowl neck that I made on that bridesmaid's dress went all the way around. It had a floopy part in the front and it had a floopy part in the back. I don't want that on this. I want like a normal neck binding on the back and then I want the cowl neck to come out and drape just in the front. I'm seeing this shape. I'm trusting myself to be able to draw it here. Folded in half, sewn into a circle, and then the curved side of it is what actually gets sewn onto the neckline and the straight side of it is what falls forward. This could be entirely wrong, but you know what? 
look at all this fabric I still have left over. So if I cut out this little piece and it isn't right, I have plenty of material to go back to the drawing board and figure out something else. Okay, I'm sure it'll be fine. Looks like that, no clue. No clue, but I shall waddle away to sew anyway. <sighs> Y'all, why? <laughs> why do I do these things? Ah! I just sewed in the pocket with the opening on the middle seam of the dress, like here, instead of the side seam of the dress where it's supposed to go. It's fine, it's not like I cut anything off. It just means that I have three long seams that I now have to seam rip. No one to blame but myself. I should pay more attention. But I did try interfacing my pockets this time, so that's fun. I usually don't do that because it just ends up feeling very stiff and I could probably get some even thinner interfacing than this. The thinnest one that I currently have is still a little thick for a knit this light. And I could probably just interface, you know, the side that's getting sewn into the opening with like a thin strip. I don't know, at this point I'm just trying different things. Cause when you're making the same dress over and over and over again, you might as well try different things. All right, kiddos, fellow adults. I don't think I have much of a child demographic. We have reached the point of the cowl neck. I just tried it on like I did with all the other ones. I think I'm not gonna do as low of a scoop neck as the last one, but instead go a little bit wider and cut some off of the shoulders. And as usual, just gonna wing it. So a bit wider, a bit lower, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna sew the ends together and then like pin the whole thing on and see what it looks like because I still have no idea. Be thou not a little bitch. It's like wrangling a wet toddler. Cow neck. That seems okay. I like the height, so I don't really want to lose any of that because that's where you get all the drape, but it is too long this way. I'm gonna just cut off that without measuring at all. Yeah, you know, I don't know, but I'm just gonna go for it. Like not even basting it, kind of go for it. Why not? Have I possibly just gotten like a little bit bored? It's possible. Yep. All right, I'll figure this out and come back to you. Eventually. I ended up cutting out an entirely new piece that looked like this, and I'd tell you more about what I changed, but it doesn't really matter, cause as you're gonna see in a moment, it still didn't work. Um, I'm gonna call that a win because I, no, I'm, well, I'm done trying to figure out how to put a cowl neck on a princess seam raglan sleeve dress. I think this is about as good as it's gonna get for now. Final product time. Okay, were all three of these dresses equally successful? No, but this one, amazing. I love it. It's so soft. It is my new purple and orange one. I'm gonna be wearing this every single week. This did kind of take me back. I feel like it's been a while since I've done a project or a video where I made several things and they weren't necessarily all successful to the same level. <laughs> I haven't graded things in the end of my video in a while. So let's grade them. I love grades. I miss school because I liked being graded. Yeah, I'm that kind of person. Uh, so starting with this one, obvies, 10 out of 10. Technically, could the neckline be a little 
neater. Yes. But I've never done a v-neck binding like this before, so I think it's not bad for my first try. My mistake of chopping off the panel too short and then having to add in the red stuff. I love it. I love how it turned out. It looks purposeful. It looks creative. It looks interesting. Love it. 10 out of 10. Dress number two. I do like the color blocking in the end. I like the addition of the purple and the polka dots. I think it looks super cute with that. The scoop neckline I also like. I just, I know, I could have made the binding a little bit smaller. There's just a slight amount of gaping in the front. Besides that, I pretty much love it. So. 8 out of 10. The difference between the softer, really light, cozy gray knit and then that purple knit, which is a more sturdy, not rough, but just like it's not soft kind of material. It does make the whole dress feel a little heavier and a little less like cozy comfy, but I do really like the trumpet sleeves, the bit of a bell on the sleeve. I think that's a nice touch and it was a super easy change to make. Dress three. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go with my good old five out of ten on this because I don't love it but I don't hate it. Maybe it gets a six out of ten. I do love it a little bit more than I hate it. It's not bad. The cowl neck obviously like didn't work. Technically that's a cowl neck. Technically. That being said it doesn't really look good. There's not enough material. I think the neckline needed to be more scooped before I started. I don't know. It just... I got tired of trying to figure it out, y'all. But ultimately, I knew it was gonna lay a little bit weird, but I was hoping that there was at least enough material that it would cover the place where it's sewn in. Like, it's not enough. You can just see the line where it's stitched onto the neckline, and that's what I don't like. And that's what I don't know how to change. If you are an expert in cowl necks, well, drop all that info in the comments. I will take it. That being said, this dress in the long version, it's great, especially in this soft sort of knit. It's that's what it feels like to wear it. Overall note, my pockets are still slightly too low in every single one of these dresses. You know what I think ends up happening is the pieces that I'm sewing the pockets onto are these side pieces here. But I always forget that they only go up basically to your armpit. So I think when I'm looking at the piece of fabric and lining up where I'm gonna start my pockets, I'm thinking in my head of like, here's neckline, here's waist. But that's not what it is. It's here's armpit, here's waist. I will do better at that next time. It's still fine. They're all still perfectly fine. So that's the end of that. I have three more fun dresses into my wardrobe. Thanks for leaving your suggestions of different things I could do with this pattern because you're the reason that I felt like I should do more things with this pattern. Appreciate it. I will see you next week if you want. Feel free to subscribe if you want. Nobody's pulling your leg unless somebody is pulling your leg, in which case kick them. I'm definitely not taking this dress off. That's the fun thing when I finish filming the final products. If the last one that I put on is just like super duper comfy, that's what I'm going to be wearing for the rest of the day. Ugh. Just be, be normal. Fourth time. These are not comfy underwear. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have too many thoughts. It just feels, that was a weird, <clears throat> boink.